Hi, and welcome to uh, probably one of the first uh, presentations about AI, practical AI red teaming, and with an example of, of facial recognition systems. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm uh, in cybersecurity for about 18 years, starting from networks up to databases, applications business critical systems and AI. Uh, I'm a founder of Adversa AI, um, member of Force Technology Council, wrote a number of books, um, been in dozens of different security conferences and presented my uh, research. I'm also very excited in other uh, technology areas such as synthetic biology, neuroscience and uh, sci -tech. And how I come up to the AI security field, I'll tell the, just a short story. So about five years ago, uh, we used to develop a user behavior analytics system to detect anonymous uh, behavior in critical applications. Uh, and at that time, and we use a lot of uh, ML uh, and AI, we, we actually had a like a brain system with multiple AI algorithms and dedicated R&D team to, for, uh, uh, for researching in AI space and cybersecurity space. Um, and then I found the research paper that uh, AI systems and basically neural networks have a vulnerabilities and you can you know, uh, fool the system. And at that moment, I realized that we, we cannot you know, develop the AI-driven cybersecurity solution without solving the task of uh, securing AI itself. And then uh, I found out that the, the only way uh, to do that is to uh, create a company that basically will put all the efforts to uh, solve this mission. And this is how Adverse uh, AI was created. So. Uh, we are a startup with a mission to increase trust in AI systems, actually by protecting uh, AI from cyber threats. And I believe that uh, by making AI systems more secure, we can actually make them uh, better in any other areas as well. Uh, and we work in three different directions, uh, in awareness area, in assessment area, and in assurance area. Uh, in terms of awareness, we uh, created a report on uh, AI uh, vulnerabilities. We uh, provide like newsletters and uh, weekly digest on all uh, these areas. Uh, in terms of assessment, uh, we do AI rate teaming. Uh, this is what I will uh, tell about in more details. And in terms of uh, assurance, we uh, have solutions and we provide solutions to actually protect uh, the system, AI systems from uh, various attacks. And uh, in this presentation, you will get a bit more details on what kind of attacks I'm talking about. So in this presentation, I'll briefly uh, tell you about the AI security in general so that you can just understand uh, the problem. Uh, then we will uh, continue with details on AI red teaming. Uh, then we will uh, learn a little bit more about the attacks in digital world. And the most important part, we will uh, continue with attacks on the physical world and uh, cyber physical security. And this is what AI red teaming is mostly all about. And in the end of the presentation, we, of course, will uh, touch defense part uh, and some takeaways. So let's go. Secure AI. So why securing AI is essential and what's, what's basically the difference? Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that the difference is uh, tremendous. It's, it's, really, it's really huge. Uh, so in the traditional software, we have some kind of uh, fixed program logic and we interact with this software with help of uh, different commands. And those commands 
are usually structured. So in most cases, the typical vulnerabilities in uh, traditional software are improper validation, such as buffer flow, SQL injections, cross searching, like name uh, any. Uh, mostly it's like it's improper validation. Of course, we have some access control things like misconfigurations, but you know most of the most critical uh, attacks are improper validation. In AI, we have uh, solutions that are basically powered by some kind of flexible machine learning training, and we interact with this software with help of uh, some cognitive uh, AI interfaces like a vision, audio, language, and so on. So this is like unstructured data. Uh, and uh, in this, in, in AI applications, we have new types of attacks, which are basically uh, similar in the, uh, in high level, they also have like, we also have an evasion type of attack, poisoning, exfiltration, but those attacks are in the different uh, areas in the unstructured data. So while we kind of know how to protect our systems from SQL injections uh, because we can, you know, sanitize input, we have no idea right now how to sanitize input in the video flow. Like what is okay in the video and what is not? What is okay in the language comments? What is okay in uh, audio? Like it's a completely different uh, type of software. It's completely different type of interfaces. It's completely different uh, types of vulnerabilities and, and so on. So the threat landscape is changing uh, and it's like uh, in the 90s we had a network security. Uh, then in the 2000s we, have, uh, we had an uh, endpoint security and like in 2010 there was an era of application security and now from 2020 we will have an uh, era of AI security. Uh, and why it's, it's critical right now, uh, because we already had examples of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability uh, problems, like uh, personal data was extracted from a Netflix uh, data set that was shared for uh, machine learning con uh, contest. Uh, in terms of integrity, uh, there was a real vulnerability in silence AI-driven malware detection engine uh, that was bypassed because of the vulnerabilities in machine learning algorithm. Uh, we keep hearing a lot of uh, news about uh, Tesla uh, problems, uh, autopilot problems, and other other uh, examples. So it's already uh, critical and we already have problems here. Um, so what are we talking about in general? Uh, what are the uh, AI applications? So in this uh, slide you can see the uh, list of applications, AI applications that had the biggest number of uh, research papers devoted to security of those applications. Um, so we see that Obviously, the image classification, like facial recognition, uh, malware detection, and all those uh, applications already have a lot of uh, real uh, vulnerabilities and real attacks. So who is affected? Uh, actually, the, both the, the new types of uh, new industries, like autonomous driving, like robotics, uh, they obviously uh, are uh, potentially uh, vulnerable to uh, like AI attacks, but also we have a lot of old school industries like healthcare, uh, finance, and they have more. Uh, they implement more and more uh, AI things, and uh, obviously may be uh, uh, vulnerable to. Uh, various AI-driven uh, AI attacks. 
um, a little bit on the history of um, uh, attacks on AI. Well, well, it's basically started way uh, before 2010, uh, but the the real like attention to this uh, topic probably started in 2014-15 after the the first uh, presentation about the uh, first research about the adversarial attacks. Uh, and then uh, we started to see more and more uh, research papers uh, either on uh, different types of attacks on um, AI applications or different uh, but approaches to protect uh, AI applications. And now, even after more than 4,000 research papers published, we still don't have any um, uh, proper protection from those types of attacks. So it's really a uh, critical problem uh, and it's, uh, it's still uh, a big problem. So what, what are we talking about? What are the, the attacks uh, in, in AI? Uh, we, we, uh, we try to create some kind of OWASP top 10 um, list of attacks on uh, AI systems based on the number of uh, research papers published uh, about those types of attacks. So the first one is evasion when we are trying to uh, bypass the normal behavior of AI system, uh, like uh, misclassify uh, dog with cat and something. Uh, we have poisoning attack. Uh, this is where we uh, inject some uh, data into the training sets. Uh, we have membership inference attacks, uh, where we can disclose uh, information of uh, if this particular uh, data example was in the training set. Um, backdoors, like a similar concept uh, as in the traditional systems. Uh, model extraction attacks are attacks uh, to extract the uh, model algorithms. Uh, attribute and inference attacks, it's uh, like disclosing information, uh, some kind of critical information about the data. Uh, Trojans, it's a kind of backdoors, but more uh, like if, if, you, if backdoors are, uh, if you have some uh, access to data and the model, so the Trojans is basically when you can inject some uh, malicious behavior in already trained uh, system. Uh, model inversion attacks, uh, when you can find uh, information about the, the data, anti-water making attacks, like bypass protection controls and co for copyrights, and etc. And reprogramming, uh, one of the most interesting uh, types of attacks, like we uh, actually repurpose AI models uh, to execute like different tasks um, so this is the, the very brief list of um, uh, most common attacks. And uh, since evasion attack is the most uh, popular one, let me briefly describe you what, what it is. So basically we have, for example, the image classif uh, classifier and uh, we have an image of peak and we want this image to be classified by AI as something else. Uh, the, the typical way in, in a very high, high level is to understand what are the most uh, uh, important pixels uh, and then change those pixels in a such way that uh, it won't be, uh, uh, it, it will be imperceptible for humans, but it will change the uh, behavior of AI algorithm. And there are many uh, different ways how to like mathematically calculate the uh, the uh, uh, amount of changes and actually the, the 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 pixels itself that you have to change. 
Um, and this is not just in academia. Uh, there were uh, a lot of uh, research papers devoted to the real software, not just only the some uh, ML algorithms. So here you can see the the huge list of uh, different types of uh, real applications, which were uh, somehow uh, bypassed uh, because of the vulnerabilities in AI systems. Um, and also, we already uh, saw a lot of uh, real attacks by uh, some uh, malicious uh, actors. Um, and here's here's a, the big list of uh, of them like uh, infection of uh, Microsoft Chatbot, uh, evasion of spam detection systems, uh, different manipulations of uh, search engines. It's a very old uh, thing. Uh, so attacks on the uh, flash recognitions for uh, tax fraud, uh, and so on. So. All this uh, information uh, is, is really a, a sign to uh, devote more attention to some kind of uh, testing for uh, uh, AI systems for vulnerabilities. And the, the new term uh, uh, was created, uh, we were called AI red teaming. Uh, so basically, it's kind of penetration testing, but for AI systems. Uh, and there are like regular security uh, teams who exploring the uh, field of uh, AI red teaming. Uh, there are AI red teams in uh, some AI development company. Uh, to test the systems internally, and there are AI uh, like special dedicated AI teams uh, offering uh, AI security advisory like like we do, uh, and more and more companies uh, currently have uh, dedicated AI teams like Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Nvidia, OpenAI, and, and so on. So. Uh, you can find uh, more details on like high-level information about AI vulnerabilities in in our report called, which was called uh, uh, "The Road to Secure and Trusted AI," uh, and here we collected information on uh, ten years of research uh, in this area. Uh, so let's jump into the more uh, practical part. Uh, like basically the AI red teaming. Um, and let's start with some AI red teaming scenario, like how to basically uh, perform it. Uh, and let's start with a problem. So as I already mentioned, uh, we have currently over 4,000 uh, research papers in the field of adversarial machine learning and every day we have like five to 10 uh, more research papers in this area and they they are more and more complex. So uh, the, se the second problem is that it's we have a countless number of different uh, conditions and combinations uh, on which those research papers were uh, conducted. So for example, like one research paper is telling you that this algorithm uh, can be vulnerable to this vulnerability uh, uh, in uh, this environment, and another algorithm telling you about the same vulnerability but in other environments. So you cannot really like compare it. So there are no like um, uh, good. Uh, databases and comparisons and statistics and so on to, to understand like what kind of vulnerabilities are real, what kind of vulnerabilities are just like research papers uh, and so on. And the other problem like there are no real, uh, real understanding of if those uh, 
potential or vulnerabilities uh, are transferable to the real world applications. You know? So we decided to propose uh, our own approach, how to test the AI systems and be sure that we covered the, the most uh, possible ways to uh, attack. Uh, so it's basically our, uh, say, uh, AI threat model. So first uh, step in the AI threat model is to choose the attack goal, like what you want to achieve. Uh, so for example, we take the facial recognition system and what we can do, we can like produce the confidence, uh, reduce the confidence. Uh, we can uh, uh, mis uh, create misclassification, like to avoid person detection. Uh, or we can make targeted misclassification, like to pretend to be another person. So, for example, uh, let's say we choose our goal as a targeted misclassification. Uh, the next step is to choose the uh, attack form, uh, and it depends on the on the threat model. Uh, it depends on the what kind of uh, facial recognition system you want to bypass. Is it uh, like a airport system? Is it a, a online banking system? Um, uh, so it depends like what kind of uh, physical patch or digital patch you can apply because sometimes you can wear glasses, sometimes you can't wear glasses uh, uh, and you need to create something uh, more complex. Some, sometimes you can have a band aid and it's okay. So the next step is to choose the form depending on your uh, uh, threat model. Next, uh, we should understand who is a, a, a potential attack actor. Uh, if attacker have some access to model, if attacker can have some access to API, or uh, he can have access to device and not more. And it, so we either have a white box testing or gray box testing or black box testing. Uh, in our particular example, we decided that we have a black box testing because we like, uh, we just had access to like device, but we have no information about the uh, algorithms and, and so on. Uh, then you have to choose attack conditions uh, like the environment. Uh, so it can be digital environment like uh, uh, some online system uh, and in an online system uh, our goal is to uh, avoid various pre-processing uh, things like compression, clipping, and so on. Uh, it can be physical environment like 3D. So uh, we should take care about the printing issues because if you construct the uh, attack like uh, glasses, uh, you test them on the digital world, but when you print them, the colors may change and they can may change like completely and your attack will not work. And if your attack doesn't work in the physical world, it doesn't mean that it's not possible. It just means that you uh, did not pay uh, attention to these uh, printing issues. Uh, so if you don't do that, you may have a false sense of security that, yeah, I just printed those glasses, but they doesn't work uh, in the physical world. So this is not the attack is not possible. No, it can be possible, but you have to do. Uh, we have you have to take into account that there are printing issues, uh, or uh, if if it's a dynamic physical environment, uh, if you need to move uh, your head, if you if you need to if you have a different uh, angles, if you have different type of light, different environment, uh, all those things are uh, 
uh, affecting your uh let's say exploit in in our case like glasses are the exploit so you you have to choose your attack conditions um so then and only then and it's like a final step you can choose the actual method uh for your attack and there are different methods uh they are usually like different mathematical uh, algorithms uh, how to um find the proper uh pixels to change how to construct this patch in such a way that it will bypass the system so here you can see the, like some of the uh most common uh, attack methods uh but uh pay attention that there are hundreds of other methods and i mean even like in the time between recording my presentation and you uh, looking at this presentation, I guarantee uh, that there will be at least one or two new methods published. So it's really a very emerging area. Uh, and finally, um, there are three success criteria for your attack. Uh, like first one is of course misclassification, like the attack success rate, like how your potential attack is uh, working, is, is it possible to achieve the goal? The second is imperceptibility, like how difficult to detect this uh, attack uh, by humans or by some algorithms, uh, and transferability, like uh, how stable this attack in changing environment or if you try to apply uh, attack that was constructed on uh, one system, if you try the same attack on the other system, so how transferable is your attack? Um, so what we achieved uh, is the attack that is transferable, um, very uh, have very good misclassification rate and uh, kind of uh, imperceptible. Uh, and in the slide you can see the some uh, article about the uh, our previous attack in the digital world. So you can see uh, the photo of journalist, uh, which we slightly changed. Uh, and then we uh, checked uh, this photo on uh, Pime Eyes. Uh, it's a face search engine. Uh, and when we put his photo on the face search engine, uh, it's uh, this search engine did, decided that he is uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, so it was uh, uh, done intentionally. So we changed his uh, photo in such a way that system, the facial recognition search engine decided that he's uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, so as a home task, you can uh, guess uh, who is on this photo. So this is a screenshot from the uh, Hack in the Box conference, and you can see that uh, it's me on the photo, but uh, some facial recognition systems will think that it's uh, somebody else. Okay, so that was um, a, a, a digital attack, which is uh, uh, impressive, but uh, we decided to uh, um, uh, make a further steps and uh, test physical facial recognition systems. Um, and it started with uh, basically the um, one of the engagements where uh, the physical security solution provider uh, asked us to test their uh, facial recognition uh, software and hardware. Um, so our goal was to demonstrate uh, that the threat is real uh, and we wanted to achieve uh, a number of goals like First, it must work in the physical environment. Uh, then, it's uh, it must be transferable 
uh, as a, it's a it's a black box attack. So uh, the goal was to construct the physical attack on the facial recognition system that can be transferable to uh, other facial recognition systems. So we had no uh, knowledge on what kind of algorithm they use. We only uh, had uh, our own uh, facial recognition engines that we downloaded from the internet and we tested all of our attacks on, on them. Uh, and the third goal, uh, we try to make it uh, imperceptible as much as possible. Uh, like, but it was not the the final, uh, not the the main goal. Um, so, as for existing research, uh, there were around hundred uh, research papers on various attacks on facial recognition. Um, some of the uh, potential uh, potential attacks uh, were mentioned in me in media, uh, but there were no uh, practical uh, live demos that they really can work in the physical world, uh, and there were no like code uh, that can prove that it's really working. And as I said before. Uh, we wanted uh, this to work not only uh, in a in a white box scenario, but also to be transferable. Uh, so why it's important to test in the real environment? Because reality is like it's much more complicated than uh, lab conditions. Uh, there are different uh, camera environment and preprocessing features and all that should be taken into account. And as I previously mentioned, so if you just try to, to uh, transfer a digital attack to physical world, it may not work, and you may have false sense of security that it doesn't work. Uh, so what are the, uh, the main environment conditions? Uh, first of all, it's uh, env uh, some environment things like uh, lights and brightness and distance to object. You, you should take into account it when you construct uh, the patch, the exploit. Uh, then we have device features uh, of, of camera itself like uh, resolution quality and color rendering. And believe me, the color rendering is can, uh, can break like most of your uh, attacks because a lot of cameras like uh, uh, have a very different color rendering and you may have a, a, a red color but it can it will uh, recognize this color as a pink color and all your efforts to construct the adversarial patch uh, will not work and also there are Preprocessing features like different codex uh, compressions and data data transfer compressions and so on. So a few approaches um, uh, how you can work with such uh, problems. Um, so you can use some uh, fine function for a big pixel difference when you construct the attack. Uh, you can train your attack, take into account that, that uh, there can be ver uh, various sizes and angles of your uh, patch. Uh, you can act or subtract color changes. As, for example, as I previously mentioned, that there is a camera that thinks that red is pink, so you may take into account this while constructing the patch. It may work, but it's not transferable uh, cheat. But it, uh, you can achieve some uh, something with with this. Uh, you can use some Gaussian blur generation uh, to be more transferable, or color randomization, and, and so on. So there are uh, different ways how to uh, overcome the environment things. So uh, the working combo. 
and it's one of the possible working combos uh, uh, that worked for us. Uh, you can see the uh, many examples that we tried, and um, you can see the one uh, example with the physical glasses that actually worked uh, in our case. Uh, and here are the, the tricks. So for a better accuracy, uh, we choose uh, to calculate uh, adversarial attack uh, on each layer of neural network. Uh, and we use deep full algorithm for that. Uh, then uh, we use the ensemble of networks uh, to train our model. So we train, oh, to train our attack, we try to uh, perform it on the ensemble of models simultaneously. So the idea is like the more uh, models you try to uh, attack, the more uh, accurate and transferable will be your uh, exploit. Uh, then for better transferability, um, we used uh, random noise while we construct the patch. Uh, and the other thing which is uh, very important, uh, in face recognition system, you, you not only have uh, a face recognition, you also have a face detection. Uh, it's also neural network which work before face recognition. Uh, and basically you need to attack two neural networks. Uh, so you need to attack one neural network, but in such way that the first neural network uh, will work and basically detect your face and detect your face properly. So your attack uh, should not uh, break, your attack on the second neural network should not break the functionality of first neural network. So it's like a chain of attacks. And to better transferability across different uh, phase detection engines, uh, we have we use different uh, phase frames to uh, transfer between different uh, phase detection engines. Uh, for better uh, imperceptibility in the physical world, uh, we use two things, the smoothing uh, function so that the colors will be more smooth and more uh, realistic. And we, uh, we use black and white uh, glasses because in uh, some of the previous research papers, uh, the glasses were, uh, they, they had uh, some acid colors and it's obvious uh, that if you have such uh, acid color glasses, that's something wrong. Uh, so we try to avoid that and uh, create the black and white glasses and it, it works. So you don't have to have a color exploit, basically uh, black and white also can work. So, here is the demo. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, I was inspired by TikTok videos and uh, the latest uh, song. So <laughs> sorry for this stupid music music uh, intro, but here you can see that it's a real. Um, physical attack, uh, it works in the physical world, uh, you can uh, just, uh, you can uh, smile, so you can do different activities with your face in such way that you basically can uh, bypass the uh, biometric systems with liveless detection, uh, because those systems can ask you for to make a smile, to blink eyes, to uh, shake head a little bit. So all this possible uh, with this physical example. Um, so yeah, results are, first of all, we successfully fooled the face recognition system. Secondly, uh, glasses have uh, the best misclassification rate, but uh, other patches are uh, also possible. Uh, 
the exploit also work even in uh, man to woman combinations. So in the in this uh, slide, you can see the uh, other example where we which we changed the the guy to uh, J K Rowling, and the further optimization is also possible. So we can make uh, glasses a little bit uh, smaller and and so on. But it was out of scope. Uh, well, um, let's talk about defenses. Um, first of all, uh, the biggest problem, it's not, as I said before, it's not a SQL injection where you know how to protect. And it's not a, like a one SQL injection, it's uh, hundreds, thousands of injection uh, injection vulnerabilities uh, in the model. So uh, um, I mean that you can create a patch uh, to detect or to buy, uh, uh, to detect the glasses that uh, we created, like this particular example. But I can create the new ones, and they will bypass the AI algorithm and so on. So it's not that easy to protect even if you have exploit. Uh, secondly, there are no one size fits all protections uh, for your AI algorithm because uh, there are different threat models. So if we talk about the digital APIs, uh, attacks can be uh, like small changes to uh, face image uh, as you saw in the first example. If you have physical uh, attack, uh, it's glasses. So those are different types of attacks and there should be different types of defenses depending on your uh, application and your threat model. Uh, and third, there are no 100% reliable protections because uh, you must test various combinations of potential defenses and you must accept potential trade-offs. So sometimes uh, if you have some uh, patch for your neural network uh, to protect from this attack, it, it may affect the overall accuracy of uh, your ML system. So uh, it's a trade-off. Okay, so, but what we can do? Um, there are three uh, high-level uh, approaches uh, to protect uh, the system. Uh, you can modify your training phase, like create, uh, make adversarial training. Uh, so basically, you can add the adversarial examples to your training data set. Um, the other thing, you can modify the model itself use different activation functions, uh, different types of layers, and do some tricks in the ML system. This is very uh, kind of hard, uh, especially if you want to be sure that the other functionality won't be broken after uh, uh, this modification. And other way is to modify the, the inputs, like do some kind of pre-processing, JPEG encoding, compression, any other things like before uh, before your model. Um, so what we can say about those approaches uh, at, at the high level, of course, because uh, there are different ways uh, and you should test it, but uh, modifying training uh, is expensive way because you have to add a lot of uh, adversarial cases. It may be even more cases than the number of uh, real cases. So you can multiply your training time uh, and your training costs by at least two or 10 on average. Uh, and also the this approach can be bypassed because you can generate the other adversarial example uh, 
uh, on trained network. Uh, you can modify models, uh, but the problem is it may lead to decreased accuracy and uh, other problems that you don't even have uh, a way to detect. Uh, and you can modify inputs. Uh, it's it's uh, probably the best, one of the best approaches, but it's uh, complicated and it's task specific. So if you create some algorithm to detect and, and modify inputs for facial recognition system, it may not transfer uh, even to face detection system. And I'm not saying that. Uh, uh, and it's hard to transfer between like other types of systems. Uh, so as you can see, all types of defenses have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, but what you can do uh, is to implement some kind of secure AI lifecycle uh, and start with awareness, like it educates stakeholders in AI and security teams that the, the threats are uh, real and study relevant policies and practices uh, to secure uh, your AI. Then uh, you can perform initial threat modeling to understand risks, and you can use our uh, threat modeling that was presented in uh, in this um, in this talk. And then you can conduct the uh, initial AI red teaming uh, for initial critical AI systems. Um, but the the most important part is the assurance. So then understand and uh, respond to uh, the findings uh, and most importantly uh, integrate those activities in, in your AI development life cycle so that it won't be just a one uh, uh, one time job it should be a, a life cycle uh, where you continuously uh, analyze it so the next steps um, there are a few things which I recommend. It's first like uh, educate your uh, AI and security teams, uh, perform initial threat modeling, uh, test your system, like conduct the area teaming, understand uh, security findings and integrate them into your AI security lifecycle. Um, so thanks for, for listening and uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, get some practical knowledge uh, from this presentation. Uh, I know it's very hard to put all this, all, all the uh, AI red teaming um, information into one hour presentation. So uh, you're always welcome to uh, download the latest uh, details. Uh, on our website, you can subscribe to our uh, newsletter and you can read our weekly digest about the new attacks, threats, and, and so on. And you're always welcome to ask any questions about uh, everything that you want to know about vulnerabilities in AI because it's really the future. So thanks for listening. Uh, and goodbye.